Oh yeah, baby. And different video game nerd here again. Nerd crazy little video and I'm very excited today because I get to talk about one of my favorite old school consoles. <sighs> Yay. Oh well, yeah, yeah to be fair this one is pretty awesome. Yeah, not to you know get too excited or anything, but today I'm gonna to be talking about the veterans. Now what makes this system so cool? Yeah, so this little beauty here, it came out in 1982. And yeah, it's pretty much a standalone system. It has its own little vector monitor to it. So the graphics that you would see in early arcade games like Asteroids, Lunar Lander, or Star Wars Arcade, yeah, a lot of those use vector style graphics to get a point across, you know, instead of using like sprite work and shit. Hey, why not use vectors? This is a cool new technology, at least for the 1980s and shit. Even for the 70s, yeah. That's how way back we go, but... Anyways, back on the Vetrets here, because... Yeah, the Vetrets actually uses its own Vector monitor. Yeah, so you now get to experience Vector-based gameplay at home on your own little monitor here. Very revolutionary, especially for the 1980s, like... You had to go like, to an expensive arcade unit to see these advanced style vector graphics, but hey, Milton Bradley and uh, General Electronics and all those companies or whoever who ever licensed the veterans out at the time, they said, hey, you're getting some cool shit right now. You just plug this baby in and you're good to go. You know, with newer systems out today, here I got like a Nintendo Wii U or whatever, yeah, <laughs> or the U system, yeah, fucking great name, Nintendo. But with this system, yeah, you had to make sure that you hook up the system. You had to calibrate the controller, which has its own screen to it. So you might have to use both the system, the controller, and then set up all your AC adapters. You gotta make sure you got the video cable. Oh wait, yeah, this one doesn't even fucking come with video cables, and yeah, uh, so you're shit out of luck if you got an older TV, especially one with a coax connection. Yeah, there's no coax connection here, so if you want RF, yep, shit out of luck. But, yeah, this one also comes with a sensor bar, so you need to hook that up too, as well as, like, the controller. You need to set up the... Okay, so... Back on track here, you need to set up the game system, you need to set up the controller, you need to set up the sensor bar, because you also need the sensor bar to play original Wii games. Because not only do you have to play Wii U games on this thing, but yeah, it also plays original Wii games. It's convenient, but it's also very fucking confusing. Say I want to play Punch-Out, which didn't come out on the Wii U. Ugh. Yeah, I had to set up my original Wii controllers, to match with the sensor bar for the fucking work. And that's a whole lot of shit you set up. And some don't even have like a game built in. Say you want Mario Kart, say you want Nintendo Land. Yeah, you have to make sure you have to get the right Wii U to get it because the older white one actually doesn't have a game built into it. Confused yet? Well, yeah, there's still the whole issue of setting up a Wii U, once you get all that fucking started, well, did you download the latest patch yet? And that may take like 30 minutes to an hour. So yeah, you have to make sure you're also connected to the internet as well. Get the latest patch so your games are not totally effed up. Or you can get the latest service from Nintendo and all that shit. And then maybe finally you can go to the menu and play some fucking Mario Kart. Which is the older edition because you want to get the Nintendo Bitch or Nintendo Switch to see if you can get the latest version. So yeah, this is already fucking outdated, but you need a lot of shit to set this up. And what do you need with the Vetrets, for example? Well, I got set up down here, so let's plug it in and try it out. Alright, so that's the little black beauty right there. That's a Vetrets. Yeah, you put games on the side over here. Controller is actually kind of convenient. You can actually just put up here when you're done, and you're good to go. And it flops right down. 
and you can put additional controllers in the side down here and that also adds as your power switch so how do you turn this thing on how many you know license updates you have to do to it well fucking none you just plug her in Turn the knob down here. And you're fucking good to go. Yeah, the Vetrets even comes with a built-in game called Mindstorm. And guess what? It's a fucking clone of Asteroids. Yeah. So that fancy turret game that's, you know, thousands of dollars in the arcade at the time, you could get to play for free if you buy bet trips here. Very cool. Now, remember how I said it was annoying that Nintendo caused you to do updates, you know, that fits their shit that they had broken and all that? Well, sadly, they couldn't do that with you know, this game right here because this is the built-in game for the Vetrets and even it comes with a glitch. So you get to level 13, you got a nice score going, you're doing awesome. Well, sadly the game fucking crashes at stage 13. The problem is the game gets so fucking hard around stages 7 and 8 that very few people will actually see the glitch, but it is there, it is annoying, and it sucks. Here in Mindstorm, this looks like Asteroids, like it was in the arcade. A lot more than Atari Asteroids on Atari 2600 anyways. Yeah, so simple little cartridges like this. You find them for your Vetra, to put them in, and you're good to go. Hyper Chase, which is a cool racing game. Clean Sweep, which is a good Batman clone. Blitz, which is, you know, early football, not NFL Blitz, but hey, good enough. Games like Berserk, yeah, Armor Attack, na, 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 na. Sergeac, Space Hawk, you know, 3D game, couldn't shit. Yeah, the Konami Shooter Scramble. Oh no, Bye. Yeah, so Spike here is freaking awesome. Yeah, it's kind of a clone of Donkey Kong, but you have a cool little attack where Spike here can kick both to the left and right. The game also has a very unique 3D look to it. In fact, a lot of Vetrets games have that. And look at this coming up here. 3D effects. Doesn't that shit blow your mind? At least it did for me way back in 1982. Sadly, all the Vetrex schemes here are technically black and white. Which is kind of freaking boring. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Virtual Boy. But, unlike the Virtual Boy... Yeah, look at this. I have some kind of overlay. Yeah, you get the Vetrex schemes in their original packaging. Make sure you get it with these. Because it will actually add color to your games. Ta-da! Fucking virtual boy. <sighs> See, instant color. Yeah, you can mix and match too. See, I had the wrong one on there. Molly. Save that bitch. Gotta save Moly Holy. See, instant color. Now we got purple. Yeah, if there's anything bad I can say about it is that, yeah, it does get a little bit noisy. Lots of buzzing. You know, even if you get one that's in great working condition, it's gonna be pretty loud. But you get used to it. It's an amazing system for its time. Oh, sadly, it just has under 30 games released for it. In 1982, it came out a price of 
Now you're thinking to yourself, hey, that's not too freaking bad, maybe I'll pick one up. <laughs> well, that was back in 1982, and that's like over $500 back then. I'm not good at inflation math and shit, but it was a lot more than what it seems right now. <laughs> yeah, darn it indeed. But, hey, there is a community for it. Just have minor nitpits about the vet chats. I wish the library was bigger, but hey, that's what the homebrew scene is for. <laughs> I actually have some very cool vet track homebrew games like V Frogger, J Smith, and his team did an awesome job. And I highly recommend the vet tracks to anybody out there who's looking for a great old school little piece of technology that's unique from everything else out there. As you can see, I love the vet tracks. And I'm only indifferent to it because I just wish it lasted fucking longer. The video game crash in 1984 done a lot of damage to it. It's still a very nice piece of history. You can get games like Pole Position, Scramble, and tons of other arcade classics for it. And yeah, some of the error exclusive games like Mindstorm, Hyper Chase, and Clean Sweep are not bad original titles either. You get four buttons on the controller, a very cool analog stick, yeah, very nice easy pick up and play system. You don't need like a million accessories to get the thing up and running, no, it's its own little beast. It's just 16 pounds, see if a nerd like me can actually lift it up, eh, anybody can lift it. Oh my hand, no, no, honestly it wasn't that freaking heavy. Yeah, so I get the veterans here, an 84 out of 100. Uh, geez, Nintendo, why do you have to screw things up? Why can't you be more like the veterans? Uh, maybe I'll save that review for another fucking day, but yeah, till then, the veterans, yeah, freaking awesome. Recommend it. Go get it. Yeah, it's only like $200 right now, which is still freaking expensive, but hey, at least it's a good system, yeah. Can't whine about too much. I can only whine about because, hey, wish there was more games and shit, wish it was less noisy. Yeah, but other than that, yeah, I love the bed tricks. Give her a shot. Alright, and that's it for me. This is Indifferent Video Game Nerd, over and out. Maybe I'll be more excited and play these games instead of fucking talking about it. Da da da. Da da. Da 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 da.